Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delray again, and welcome back to my channel. So, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today, I'm gonna go over creating some 3D objects that are available in Unity by default. I'm gonna go over and create a cube, create a capsule, a quad, a plane, and also a cylinder. And I'm also gonna show you how we can assign different materials to each one of these. So, let's go into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing today. I'm going to open Unity and we're going to create a new project called unity editor fundamentals so i'm going to click on new and that's how we're going to name it it's going to be 3d and it's going to be in the same location as we did last time then create project so the reason why i want to do this is because i want to share this video actually the source code with you so that you can download it at any time so if you get lost or if i'm going too fast then you can you know you can always download it and, and see what changes we did in the session so that you can follow through and look at it on your own time. Okay, so it looks like it's getting generated and looks like we're done, perfect. So the first thing that I wanna do today is I want to walk you through how to create different game objects. I show you last time that we created, a, we could look at the hierarchy and I show you that we had, you know, by default we have a main camera we have a directional light and I also created a cube so I want to show you some of the other options that are available in Unity for you to create predefined 3D models that Unity provides for you so if you right click on the hierarchy you can go into a 3D object you also have 2D objects that you can create effects, lights, audio and we'll go into some of these in the next videos for now let's just focus on the 3D object so what I can do now is if I want to add a cube I can basically just add a cube to the to the scene. Let's just focus on the scene view for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it a little bit. Let's just do like negative, negative 10 on Z. And we're gonna line them all together so that you can see everything that is available. So the other one that I want to do, I'm gonna right click on hierarchy one more time, 3D object, and we're gonna do a sphere this time. And we can use our move tool to basically align it with our cube. If I select it and press the F key on my keyboard, I can zoom in. I can also drag with my mouse around and basically position it close to the cube so that we can have everything that is available next to each other. Perfect, so I'm gonna actually rename, actually resize this to 1.2, 1.2, and then 1.2 on all axes. And then so that it's kind of like the, the same size of the cube. We can move it closer together. Perfect, we can also, so I don't like to have too many decimal numbers when it comes to, you know, positioning. So I'm gonna say negative 8.6 on, on on the Z axis. Excellent, so now let's do another one. So let's do, we did a 3D object of cube, a sphere, now let's do a capsule. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just basically put it right next to it. And we can do negative 7.2, should be fine, excellent. We could also resize it if we, if we think it's too big. We can say 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then 0.8 for the scale on X, Y, and Z. And that kind of looks, that looks a lot better. Perfect, so let's, let's do another one. So let's do a 3D object, and this time we're going to do a cylinder. And we're gonna zoom out with our mouse, and we're gonna put it next to, next to our capsule. This one is also gonna be 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and then 0.8 we can see that we're, we're starting to get a variety of them. Excellent, we can also resize it. So if we resize it a little bit on Y, so you can see that that is changing. So what I did is I pressed the R key. I can also go to W, R, and then that will toggle a different gizmo. So if I do R, it's gonna allow me to scale it. So I'm gonna scale it right about, let's, let's actually click on the Z on our little gizmo here, and you can, we, we can look at the side view. If I click on this square on the middle, it's gonna change it to autographic view. And that's gonna allow us to basically align them perfectly. You can see that, you know, I'm a little bit off on, on the on this side. I can, I can move it up if I wanted to. And we can say, okay, that's gonna be a size of 0.75. I like that. We can also look at it from, the, from another angle. So from the side view. And I could actually make it a little, you know, bigger. So we can say that this on, on X is gonna be one. We can go back to our front view, perfect. And 
The other thing that happened here is this added automatically a capsule collider to it. So I'm not gonna worry about the colliders for now. So I'm just gonna remove these colliders. So we can go into the cylinder, look at the capsule collider component that was added, click on the little settings on the gear icon, remove component. And you can see that with that, I can remove different components. The other thing that I don't like, it's now that I made it fatter, it just looks strange. And I'm just gonna change it back to 0.8. Okay, perfect, that's looking great. Let's go back into our front view here, auto graphic, and excellent. So let's do another one. So this time I'm going to create another 3D object, and this time it's gonna be a plane. And let's go into our perspective again by clicking, and look at, looks, looks like our plane is way too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my R key to go to, re, basically, to resize mode, and I can move this on the side, here, so I'm using my move tool. If I click on R, I can change the scale. If I click on E, if I press E, I can change the, you know, the rotation of the object. So the other thing that I can do is, as I'm rotating, you can tell that it's rotating on Z if you ever get lost. And what that allows me to do is see which axis is rotating. I can also look at, you know, that this is on the Z axis. So if I wanted to do, you know, 90, I can type in 90. If I wanted to do negative 90, then I can do that as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, place it. And I'm hold, I'm, I'm pressing on F every time I want to select an object. So I can select that one, press F, select this one, press F. I can go back to my plane and press F. And I'm now dragging around to, so let's size this better. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to size it about, you know, something about like that. We can. We can do something like that. Let's go to our graphic view, and I can zoom in, and I think, yeah, I think that works perfectly. So on this one, I have a lot of decimal places, so let's just, let's just do 0.14 there. Let's do, and this is just something that I just, you know, I, I got used to. These are, of course, floats, so you can, you, ha you can have very large, you know, decimal numbers. And I'm gonna go right about there. We can resize it a tiny bit on, on this axis. It's gonna be the X. And I think I can do, I think I'll be fine with one, with 0.15. Excellent, so now we have all of those created. So now let's create a different one. So I'm gonna right click on the hierarchy, 3D object, and let's create a quad. And we can put the quad right there. And we can rotate it. So. As you can see, I'm rotating it to see if I ever get loss of which axis I need to rotate. Of course, this is the Y axis. Then I can rotate it, you know, part of part of the rotation that I want to do, and then I can perfectly say, okay, this is going to be negative 90. And then I'm going to hold my F key, and I think we can go to the Y, and of course, this is going to be really hard to see, so I'm just going to drag a little bit so that we can see that we can see the quad. Perfect. And to be honest, I don't use the quad very often. The one that I use is the plane for, you know, a lot of the floors that I'm creating for the games. And of course, if they are flat, and if I'm doing the formations on them and, and I create a shader, then, you know, using a plane works really well. Okay, so that looks great there. And I'm happy with that. We can also resize it just a tiny bit more. Perfect. And we can say 1.33. Excellent. So now, now let's do another one. So this time I'm gonna do. So there's other things that we can we could do. We could use text. We could also use a ragdoll, terrain, a tree, a wing zone, and also 3D text. I'm going to just focus on you know on just on these models for now, and then we can add other things later. So as I, as I was showing you by default, every time you add a new game object. It shows you, you know, that it's it's gonna add either a cube for the model, a mesh filter for the model, a mesh renderer, and also a box collider. So these are the things that it adds by default. But you're if you don't want to, for instance, let's say that I don't want to have colliders on any of these, I could go ahead and, and select each one of them and then just do remove component. I could also remove on this one it created a different type of collider because it's not it's not a cube anymore. So in the other one was a box collider, this is gonna be a sphere collider. 
on the capsule it did a capsule collider of course because it is a capsule and then if I do a cylinder I already removed the capsule collider that was assigned with that one and then on the plane it, there is a mesh collider and the quad a mesh collider as well I'm gonna go over colliders on the next video so that we can actually find out how they work and the different types of colliders that I just mentioned all go into more detail about that perfect so we have you know six different game objects on the scene each of them have their own mesh filter mesh render I also show you how to modify the transformation so anytime I mention a transform I'm referring to the position the rotation of, a, of an object and also the scale of an object there are also other attributes that are associated with a transform that we'll cover in another video so excellent so I also cover that you know we could create materials and we also created a material last time so I'm gonna go ahead and assign a material to each one of these so that we have multiple materials so we also lost our folders because this is a brand new project so I'm gonna have you right click on assets click on create folder and then this time I'm gonna call it materials and we're gonna create a material for each one of these so I'll just name them just as the name of the game object so this one is gonna be so we're gonna right click on this area create material this one is gonna be for the cube and then the other cool thing that I can do with the materials and anything that is in in the project area is, is I can actually duplicate these so I'm on a Mac so I'm gonna do command you know command D to duplicate it and I can do you know call this on a sphere I'm also gonna duplicate it one more time this one is gonna be for the capsule I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and this one is gonna be for the cylinder I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and this one is gonna be for the plane and then lastly I'll do one for the quad excellent so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna associate each one of these material with these objects so there's multiple ways to do that so if I click on this cube and let me fix this misspelling here capsule no capsule <laughs> okay perfect so let's go select the cube so I can drag and drop either into here and you can see that that associated that capsule material so and I'm also going to change the color so let's make the cube uh, red and I think I associated the wrong one so let's do this one more time and let's do the cube one to the cube and just select that and also select the cube so I can drag it and drop it here or I can drag it and drop it here see either way it will work it looks like that works so let's make the cube red perfect and now that we already changed the color of the capsule what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop it into the capsule and look at look looks like I can do that as well so I can either associate it through the scene I can associate it through this game object or I can associate it by selecting the game object and dragging and dropping the material to the inspector so there's multiple ways so on the capsule I'm gonna change this to say you know have a different color let's do maybe want the capsule to be yellow perfect now let's do the sphere and let's look for a sphere here and it looks like I typed that running run as well and looks like that's correct now and I'm gonna drag it and drop it to our sphere here and we can change that color so let's change this sphere to be you know maybe a blue there we go let's go to the cylinder and associate the cylinder with it perfect and we can change the cylinder to be maybe you know a green color now we can go to our plane also associate the plane and we can change the plane to a different color let's do the plane maybe we do it more of a uh, let's see let's do a light green we can do something like something like that works and lastly let's do our quad and drag it and drag it drop the material into the quad inspector excellent and let's do the quad as black perfect so now we have you know each one of these ones have our own material and they or I have it associated with them so I can go to the capsule see that they have a capsule the cylinder the plane and the quad and like I show you I could change the material color colors through the inspector if I wanted to change this maybe I changed my mind and I want this to be you know a grade I could do that or I can click on the you know the materials under mate the material folder that we created and also change it that way maybe I want to do this one more of a you know much lighter 
lighter green that works as well so what if I wanted to look you know to have this more of a metal metal type blue so I can go into my sphere and I can change the metallic property you can kind of see that that's already changing to more of a you know metallic type material and what I'm gonna do here is I have the shader white frame turned on I'm gonna go back to shade it and let's select that there we go so that looks a lot cleaner and you can kind of see that this one it's getting a little bit of a metallic because we did more of a metallic you know look and feel to that I can also change the smoothness if I want it to look really really metallic we could you know we could do that Let's do the same thing on, let's say, on this guy on the cylinder. I'm going to make it very, very metallic-like. And we can change the smoothness all the way to zero. And that kind of looks like more, you know, more metallic. And I can do the same thing with this one. And those are kind of looking like metallic materials. And on this one, we can do, we can do something different. Let's say that we wanted to change the emission. And the emission is going to allow us to do something really cool. So you can see that I'm, I'm somehow, you know, modifying the emission of this material. So I can modify it to be, you know, maybe, maybe give it a little more, you know, emission, something like that, that looks a little more cartoonish. And then let's do the same thing with the plane. So on the plane, I'm going to do that as well. And let's do... Let's do it something like that. And, and this is using global illumination. So whenever you're changing the emission, you're changing how much of the light is affecting this material. In this case, the plane that has a material of type plane associated with it. So you can see that I can either do real time or I could use bake illumination. I'm gonna cover that in another video where we're gonna go in and actually bake our lights. So for now, let's just do, you know, let's just leave it as default. I can also turn it off if I didn't want to, you know, have any emission on this material. Perfect. So the other thing that I want to show you is you can also change the specular highlighting. If I didn't want to have any specular highlights, you can see that that now doesn't have any specular highlights. If I do, if I turn it on, you're going to see that that looks much better. The same thing with reflections. If I didn't want this material to be reflected, you know, against anything, I could turn it off or I could turn it back on. So perfect. So we'll go into more detail about this. For now, just keep in mind that, you know, we created multiple materials for each one of these game objects. Let's go back into our plane. I think that, that it's just too much emission. It's really hard to see the color. Let's change it back to zero. Let's actually turn it off. And there we have it. So. We created a basically a 3D model for each one of these pieces in Unity. I also show you how to create different materials for each one of them. And I think I'm gonna leave it here and we're gonna continue and look at collisions in our next video. And also be, be, be sure to check the description of this video where I'm gonna put a link to the source, to the source code of this and also the project so you can download it and look at what we did in this session. So thank you very much guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you.